Hello and welcome to Study Class with me, Auntie Josie. It's yet another day, another episode uh, where I would like us to close on certain issues that we were discussing about dating. Because before you go into dating, there are certain things you're supposed to look at from deep inside yourself to search yourself to ascertain whether you are really ready for dating. Because most of the times, dating is done so that it can lead to a meaning, meaningful relationship, basically marriage. So we talked about physical um, maturity and uh, stability, mental health and uh, mental maturity, social health, social maturity. And of course, we did financial health and financial maturity. These are the things you really need to look at before you go into marriage. Ask yourself, am I fit to be in marriage? Okay. So, but I promised that before we close all this, I will discuss the issue of causes of poor mental and emotional stability. You understand? What really leads people into these mental spaces of so much instability in their mind? They're too emotional, poor judgment. They are not rational most of the times. What are these? What, what are these factors that actually lead people to these kind of places? And, and also the emotional bit of, of it. Okay. So number one, I would like us to start with childhood tra traumas. The way someone was brought up determines a lot what kind of person they become in future. If someone grows up in abusive home, toxic homes, where there was no love, where there was no uh, appreciation and support, people who grew up in homes where there was just chaos, where instead of hugs and kisses, they were given kicks and blows, this kind of people, they always tend to turn out quite different. Okay, number one, let me just mention some of the things that could be going on in this kind of homes. Number one, there is sibling rivalry, especially if it is a polygamous arrangement. And of course, all these wives live in the same compound. It is tragic, I'm telling you. The competition for love and support and attention from the parents is crazy. So these kind of people, they always come out as extremely aggressive, always fighting, always fighting because that is what they do. They want to fight so that at least their presence can be felt. Number two, the issue of sex abuse. It is, it is, it is crazy what this can do to a child. And as they grow up, they grow up with a lot of fear. They will have negative attitudes towards sex or on the extreme, they might actually become sex addicts because that is how they think life should be done. And so they use that to heal. They grow up with a lot of mistrust or quiet. And they are the kind of people who just shut up in relationships. And they will not be, they don't want to talk. And then you will also realize that sometimes in relationships they become very aggressive because they think uh, that uh, you want to visit the same trauma, the same ordeal on them. So they will be aggressive in a manner of fighting back. You understand? Physical abuse. These, are, these people, they grow up in anger. And then, of course, the way they handle issues, they will be controlling. Because they handle issues with a lot of um, anger. Because they, and, and they will want to hit somebody because that is how they grew up. To correct someone, you must hit them. To talk to someone, you must hit them. To respond to something, you must hit them. To actually communicate with someone, you must hit them. Because that is how they were brought up. So they take it into relationships. People who are neglected and abandoned as children... Uh, they are crazy people. These are the people who grow up blaming other people for their mistakes because, I mean, they were not taken in fully by families. You understand? A father that walked away, a mother that walked away, neglected or simply abandoned. Okay? So they grow up with a the, with the, with the, with the kind of thought that this is life. No one has ever loved me. No one has ever appreciated me. So when they come into love, they want to possess. They want to pos They get possessive and obsessive about it. And in fact, if you try to leave them because they are, so, they are so tired of being alone for the rest of... Like they've spent their lives just being alone, struggling alone. So when they fall in love with you and you tell them that, I'm sorry, I would like us to take some time off. I would like us to take a break. You know, it, it, it just kicks something into their mind. You want to go again, so they get aggressive. And this is how people die, actually. There are people who, while growing up, uh, <laughs> they never had anyone. So when you tell them you want to leave them, 
they start planning on how to kill you. In fact, they get so controlling, they'll be like, I don't want you to talk to people because they think that if you talk to people, you will be planning on how to, to leave them. I don't want you to have friends. I don't want you to go to work. These kind of things are quite deep. These are the people that actually need therapy. Look at yourself. Do you um, exude any of these emotions in you? Do you have any, any of these angers and fears inside you? Okay. Then there are people who, who are angry at their parents. They have bitterness towards their parents because of one thing or another. And issues like divorce, they, 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 they are children who just start blaming a particular parent. Because even as a divorce is going on, most of the times there is a parent that is blaming the other for the separation. No, I can't be with your mother. I've had enough. No, we can't live with your father. We need to go away. So, And then there is this poisoning from one parent about the other parent. And so they grow up with a lot of bitterness towards their parents. And they carry this bitterness into their relationships because they think, oh, this person is going to leave me, leave me like my father left my mother. This person is going to betray me like my father betrayed my mother or like my mother betrayed. Oh, it, it, usually it, it's just a lot of work. The other factor that leads to mental uh, instability and emotional instability is the use of drugs. We know what drugs do to the mind. They alter the brain. They damage functions of the brain, proper functioning of the brain. So you realize that these are the people who most of the times will go into depression. Uh, because at a particular point, they don't even know how they got into what they're doing. And they, they don't know how to get out of what they are doing. So they go into this space of so much thinking that leads to depression and some, sometimes a suicide. Drugs can also lead to schizophrenia. It leads to anxiety. It can lead to paranoia, fear of nothing. Even when there's nothing happening, even when nothing is going to happen, they have this fear that something is actually about to happen. It also leads to aggressiveness, impaired judgment, uh, yeah, those kind of things. Drugs are crazy. So anyone who has been through drugs or is doing drugs should not get into a relationship that will lead into marriage. You really need to cleanse your system, go into rehabilitation, cleanse your system, and then, of course, set your mind straight for the task ahead, the task of marriage. The other factor that leads to mental and emotional instability is traumatic life experiences. Number one, death. I have seen people lose loved ones and they just don't get back together. They just break into pieces. It's over. They, they, they go into a place of so much chaos. They don't know how to cope with the loss of this loved one, particularly if it is a parent <laughs> a sibling, yes, a friend who was so close to you, you shared so much, yeah, those kind of things, they tend to shake people. Prison life. And as I, I speak of prison life to young people, this is about uh, young people who have had their parents go into prison. Your mother went into prison. Your father was charged with a certain crime. They went into prison that abscess then of course there's the stigma from the, the society the way now the society starts treating you as a family because your parent apparently was arrested by the cops and, and is now in prison or was charged for murder was charged for theft and stuff like that it totally affects children the way young people grow up so they grow up with a lot of anger inside them okay with a, a kind of anger towards the whole world and they most of the times they are unstable with their emotions they, when they love, they love deeply, and when it is time to go, it is chaotic. Then they want to come back and redo the whole thing again. <laughs> I'm telling you, being with these kind of people can be exhausting. But this is why we talk about therapy. They need to go into therapy so that at least they can start forgiving and forgetting the past and forge forward. Okay. Then there's also traumatic life experiences such as parents who lose jobs. I've seen I've seen families where parents parents were living a luxurious life and then due to loss of a job or death of that parents or something like that then you know now they have to move from a from a high class uh, neighborhood you know and they sell vehicles things happen even bank loans you or you know properties are possessed and so you have to these these people now they have to to live a you know like what they define poverty to them now that is poverty because it's a switch from so much comfort and luxury to almost nothing. So when that happens, there's a way it really shakes children, I'm telling you. The fear, financial strains and things like that, it really affects this kind of children, okay? And then 
last but not least, bullying. Anyone who faces segregation, anyone who faces prejudice while they are growing up because of their looks, because of their background, because of their physical appearance, probably they are uh, physically disabled because people will call them um, ugly or because of their race. It could be anything. Okay, their beliefs, culture, and things like that. This always, uh, bullying is so bad because these kind of people, they grow up protecting themselves so much they don't like people around them. It takes them so long to allow people into their lives. It is crazy. And then you judge them. They don't want you to call them anything or to judge anything that they're doing because by doing so, it starts a quarrel. It starts a fight. It means that actually you are judging them. Again, you're taking them into the bullying space. Okay, And so on and so forth. Find a therapist. Discuss these kind of things, your childhood traumas, if you've used drugs, if you've been through traumatic life experiences, before you go into dating, so that when you get into marriage, you'll be healthy enough to sustain a marriage. Thank you so much for watching this video. Give it a thumbs up and, of course, uh, subscribe to this channel. Thank you.